This video is going to be all about, about notation. Now, mathematics, we use different types of notation all the time. It isn't always the sexiest thing in the world. The, the, the sort of first thing is just that we want to make our lives easier. We've got all these different ideas running around and our notation allows us to simplify concepts. But good notation, really elegant notation, is going to be notation that simplifies challenging and more cumbersome concepts in a way that's really elegant, that, that represents sort of fundamental and important and deep ideas within the subject matter. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a very simple notation, AX equals B, and it's going to be a shorthand for a much larger amount of notation, but this notation is going to very naturally represent some important ideas in linear algebra. So let's pick up with a concept that we've seen previously, the idea of a linear combination. We would say that some vector like B, that this was going to be a linear combination of a bunch of vectors A1 down to AN. If I could write it like this, if I could say it was some scalar multiple times some first vector, which I will call A1, and then all the way down to an nth scalar times an nth vector, something like that. And then if I want to look at what's going here, when, when I have the sort of the A1 and the AN, these are just n different vectors that could have, let's say, m different components to distinguish it the fact that I have n different vectors. So the n vectors, they are all going to live inside of Rm. That is to say that they've got m different components. So let me take even this and let's make my notation even worse for a moment. I'm going to expand each of these vectors. I'm going to say this is going to be x1 and then multiply by a whole vector. And this is the vector why we'll write it like this a11 down to am1 where the second component tells me that I'm in this this first vector and that the first component tell me I'm either the first component all the way down to the nth component plus dot 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 all the way down to this scalar xn and this multiplied by the vector an and I'm going to give it a1n down to a M, N, where the first component again is telling me which row I'm in and that the second component is telling me in effect that I'm in the nth column or the nth vector in this linear combination. And if I wanted to go even a little bit further, I could use the properties of scalar multiplication of a vector and addition of a vector to say that this is the same thing as x1 a11 plus dot 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 all the way down to xn a 1n where I've just taken that entire first row and I've put it all together into the same vector and this is going to go dot 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 all the way down to x1 a m1 dot 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 plus x n a m n so it gets a little bit confusing but as long as I just gen generally think that a i j is referring to the ith row and the jth column, so something like this am1 that I have over here, that is referring to the mth row and the first column, I think we can keep track of it. So now I'm going to take it one step further, and I'm going to introduce to us some new notation. It's going to be based out of the idea that this thing that I have, notice that I have sums inside of there. So it, it's not a listing of different numbers, it's not a matrix yet, but it kind of looks like a matrix, it's got the same AIJ notation that we've seen from matrices before. And I kind of feel like the important information here, all of these coefficients AIJ, is very similar to what we have in a matrix. So I'm going to define something referred to as a matrix vector product. And it's going to work like this. I'm going to write an equals colon. That means I am defining the thing on the right that I don't understand by the thing on the left, which I'm hoping that I do understand. It is going to be defined like this. So this matrix product is going to be defined like this. First of all, I'm going to put in all those coefficients, the aij. So I've got an a11 dot 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 to an a1n dot 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 to an am1 and dot 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 to an amn. All right, so that sort of abstracted away all of the coefficients, but I need to have this x1 down to xn somewhere in there. And notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to so-called multiply this particular matrix on the right by the vector x1 
all the way down to xn. So this is what I refer to as the matrix vector product of a matrix A, that big capital A now is my shorthand for this entire set of symbols, the A11, the A1n, the AM1, all the way down to the AMN, and of course everything in the middle. And then on the far hand right, this vector whose components are the x1 down to the xn, this is going to be a vector x. Now, I want to make one last point. This vector x that I have down here, this is n different components and it lives inside of Rm. But what we're really claiming is that this whole thing is going to be equal to the vector b, right? That's what I had way off at the start. And this vector b is going to live inside of Rm. It has m different components. Finally, the matrix A is going to be, well, it's got m rows by n columns, where this n is going to match this n here. So one way to conceive about a matrix is that it's something that transforms vectors living in Rn into vectors living in Rm. And this sort of linear transformation way of thinking about what's going on is something that we're going to deal with in a very large amount later on in the course. But at, at this point, it's just worthwhile noting that we have this real nice shorthand, just AX equal to B. It's very short. And this shorthand also sort of reflects the idea of just, just multiplying an X thing, which is living in RN, and you get out this B thing, which is living in RM. And that sort of philosophical shift that this notation allows is going to be very important for us going forward.